When you imagine a zombie, you may picture a fictional rotting human dragging their feet and moaning in some state of decomposition. But what if I told you that zombies exist in space? What if I told you that when a star dies, it doesn't just disappear, but it begins a whole new life as a compact object? And what if I told you that these compact objects are so extreme and pack so much mass into tiny areas that they bend time and space itself? This is what my PhD research is focused on understanding, a specific type of compact object called a neutron star. A neutron star is a dense remnant of a dead star that is about the size of Melbourne, but holds about one and a half times the mass of our sun. Now this is pretty hard to imagine. So to put this into perspective, if you were to go to a neutron star and grab a handful of material and bring it back to Earth, on Earth, it would weigh a whopping five billion tons, just that one handful. Now that's about five Mount Everests. So you can see that neutron stars operate at the extremes of physics, from the insane densities reached inside of them, to their strong gravitational fields, to their strong magnetic fields, neutron stars are positively bursting with physics and represent conditions that we just can't get to on Earth. So I like to think of neutron stars as space laboratories for us scientists. But there's a problem, as there always is in science. Neutron stars don't emit light from nuclear burning like a normal star, and they're very small objects, and space is really big. In fact, we've only found about 2,000 neutron stars in total, when there should be about a billion in our galaxy alone. So how do we find them? Well, one of the ways is we look for their interaction with things around them. For example, if the neutron star was born in a binary orbit with a normal star. This brings me to accreting neutron stars. So these are neutron stars in close binary orbits and because the neutron star has such a strong gravitational field and it's in a very close orbit with a normal star, it can actually pull material, so like gas, from this companion star in towards the neutron star. And this gas will spiral in and form a structure called an accretion disk. And as the gas is spiraling in through the accretion disk, it's actually heated up and it emits light and energy. And this is exactly what I'm searching for when I'm looking for these space zombies. The light they emit is actually so energetic that it's primarily emitted in the X-ray portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. But we're not done yet. These things are even cooler. They can create huge explosions on their surface that emit more energy than the sun does in 10,000 years in less than a minute. These explosions are called thermonuclear X-ray bursts and happen when the accreted fuel, so the fuel that the neutron star has consumed, builds up on its surface and ignites in an unstable thermonuclear runaway. Hundreds of nuclear reactions happen in these explosions and they're super interesting to study from a nuclear physics perspective because a lot of these nuclear reactions are really difficult to replicate on Earth. So I hope I've got you all as excited as I am about these star-consuming space zombies, aka accreting neutron stars. This brings me to what my PhD research is actually about. The primary goal of my research is to further understand accreting neutron stars by studying how their strong gravitational fields affects their environments, the thermonuclear explosions that can occur on their surfaces, and the geometry and structure of the accretion disk and accretion flow. To achieve these goals, I have used a combination of observations and models. For observations, I have used more than 10 telescopes around the world, and this here is a map of some of the locations of those telescopes, including some telescopes in space. And the reason that we use space telescopes is because X-rays actually don't pass through the Earth's atmosphere, which is lucky for us, so it means we're not constantly being irradiated by all this high-end irradiation, but it kind of sucks for someone like me because it means it's really difficult for us to get observations of X-rays from things outside of our solar system. On the modeling side of things, I have developed my own models as well as using models that are part of larger efforts. So, to the science. The first exciting thing I discovered, and you actually may have seen this in the news kind of recently, is that I coordinated observations of the rise to outburst. So this means the beginning of the accretion process onto a neutron star for the first time in multiple wavelengths. So this means that we were using more than seven telescopes to watch this thing switching on. Now these things are really hard to catch when they're in the process of beginning accretion. So with the combination of luck and coordination, we were able to watch the whole process from when there was no accretion to the beginnings of the activity to when the accretion actually happened. And this graph here shows the light curve that we obtained. So the light curve means that the light that was coming from this accreting neutron star during this process and the different colored lines 
indicate different telescopes, which means different wavelengths of light that we were able to obtain. Now, these observations are super important in understanding the accretion disk structure and the accretion flow to the neutron star, and they're the first of its kind. On the modeling side of things, I developed an accretion model that models the accretion geometry and how the accreted fuel may spread over the neutron star if it is channeled to the poles by a strong magnetic field. And this means that because the neutron star has such a strong magnetic field, the magnetic field can actually channel some of the accreted fuel to the poles of the neutron star. And you end up with a hotspot where all of the fuel is hitting the one spot on the neutron star. And we think this could affect the internal structure going down into the neutron star, and that's exactly what I modeled. And you can see this rainbow graph here shows an output of this model where there is a hot spot on the surface and goes deeper into the neutron star, and you can see that there is a temperature gradient going downwards. I also was able to develop a simple relation for the total energy produced in an X-ray burst, depending on the, the fuel composition. And in the process, I actually discovered that we had been overestimating the amount of neutrinos produced in an X-ray burst in all of our models. And this is super important for us to get right, because um, obviously, in order to correctly model the total energy net, of an X-ray burst, we need to know how much energy is being released as neutrinos. And finally, I published some public software that predicts the creating neutron star parameters that we can't observe by matching observations of X-ray bursts with models. This software is called BEANS, and that stands for Bayesian Estimation of Accreting Neutron Star Parameters. I was pretty proud of that acronym. Now, this is not all of the research I have done during my PhD, but it's just a few highlights. So to summarize, my research has helped us gain an understanding of how an outburst is triggered, so how the accretion process is triggered onto the neutron star, as well as providing constraints on the accretion disk structure and flow using both observations and models. I've also developed a simple relation for X-ray burst energy released based on fuel composition, and this can be used by both observers and modelers to further understand accreting neutron star systems. I also published some public software that can predict unobservable neutron star parameters, mainly mass and radius. And the understanding the neutron star mass and radius means that this can help us understand um, the equation of state of dense matter. So that means how matter behaves at the densities reached inside of a neutron star, because this is not something that we currently know. My thesis will include six scientific journal articles. I've already published five and I've got one in the works. And generally this work contributes to our understanding of dense matter, strong gravitational fields, thermonuclear reactions, and the population of accreting neutron stars as a whole. So the next time you look up at the night sky and see all the beautiful bright stars, maybe you'll think about the things you can't see, like the space zombies lurking out there, consuming stars, and in the process, helping us understand the universe we live in.